Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yesudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Today's topic is a common condition that many of us have experienced, which is premature greying of the hair, otherwise called premature canitis. Premature greying of the hair is said to occur if it begins before the age of 20 years in Caucasians, before 25 years in Asians, and before 30 years in Africans. The term grey hair is actually a misnomer. The appearance of grey hairs is a mixture of the colour of the pigmented dark hairs and the depigmented white hairs. The pale yellow of keratin appears white due to reflection or refraction of light. So why do we get grey hairs? Currently, it's mainly considered to be genetic, with an interplay of various environmental factors too. It usually appears alone, without any underlying pathology, as an autosomal dominant condition. It may be associated with certain organ-specific autoimmune conditions like pernicious anemia, hyper and hypothyroidism, and as part of atopy or sensitive skin. Premature aging syndromes like progeria is an extremely rare cause of this condition. There have been studies associating grey hair with alcohol consumption, smoking, and obesity. Other causes implicated include stress and the use of certain prescribed medications. At the molecular level, oxidative stress of the melanocytes may be responsible. Quite a few receptors are being investigated at present, so hopefully this will lead to some form of therapeutic intervention once we know which molecules need to be stimulated to bring back the hair color. That's for the future though. Gray hair has certain unique characteristics. It's coarser, thicker, longer and less manageable than pigmented hair. Gray hair is more susceptible to damage by UV radiation than dark brown hair, so it requires more protection when you go out in the sun. Gray hair is also usually hard to stain with hair dyes and holds color weakly, whether it's temporary or permanent dyes. In clinical practice, gray hair can be easily noticed and is more readily apparent amongst people with dark hair, but total graying is found earlier amongst the fair-headed. It affects both genders equally. In men, graying usually begins in the temples and in the sideburns, later going on to the vertex, and then the remainder of the scalp affecting the occiput last. The beard and the body hair are affected later. Chest, pubic and axillary hair may remain pigmented even to old age. Women, on the other hand, usually start graying in the perimeter of the hairline. Despite advances in our collective knowledge of this condition, the treatment remains limited and inadequate. No permanent grey hair reversible treatment is approved. We could try and treat underlying conditions like for example vitamin B12 deficiencies and thyroid abnormalities. Cessation of smoking and protection from the sun may also be beneficial. Nutritional supplements that contain Vitamins and minerals such as biotin, zinc, copper and selenium have been suggested but the level of scientific evidence regarding their efficacy is very low. Plucking out the grey hair may be reasonable if less than 10% of the hair is grey. Colouring only the grey hairs may also be considered in the early stages of this condition in cases where it's confined to the temples in men and the perimeter in women. There is anecdotal advice for a couple of old agents. In a study comprising 460 people with grey hair, paraamnobenzoic acid at a dose of 100 mg three times a day caused darkening of the hair in 80% of those patients within two to four months. However, relapse was evident at two to four weeks after the drug was stopped. Calcium pantothenate, 200 mg daily, may also be beneficial. In one study, it was combined with grey hair avulsion therapy and yielded better results. It's interesting that not all grey hairs that were avulsed grew back as grey hair. In fact, some of them are dark. However, there are subsequent studies that found that both paraamnobenzoic acid and calcium pantothenate may be ineffective. Latanoprost is a prostaglandin eye drop. Grey hair pigmentation has been reported after prolonged use for three years of these drops. Repigmentation started at the proximal portion of the hair and then increased over the entire length of the hair. The proposed mechanism of action is that prostaglandins are one of the most potent stimulators of melanocyte growth and melanogenesis. Topical melatonin is another agent which works on alpha-MSH stimulating melanin synthesis and it has been reported to be helpful. 
Before applying melitane, the scalp should be either washed with a mild shampoo or cleaned with a wet towel. A dose of 1 ml per day can be applied by using a spray or a dropper. There is no need to rinse off the solution post application as it gets completely absorbed in the scalp. Therapy should be continued for at least 6 months. It's recommended for premature canitis between the ages of 8 and 25 years only. Anti-aging compounds such as green tea, polyphenols, selenium, copper, melatonin are under study for potential use in premature graying of hair. Recombinant human growth hormone has led to improvement not only of hair growth, and thickness but also a darkening of hair in some cases. The most common treatment is the use of hair dyes to conceal the grey hair. In addition to concealing grey hair, it may also protect against photo damage from the sun. Natural hair dyes are commonly used including those prepared from Indian gooseberry, lotus tree and henna. There is one study that used a solution of coffee powder to stain the hairs too. The advantage of natural hair dyes is that they are hypoallergenic and non-toxic. However, permanent hair dyes are the most popular in the commercial market. To date, there are very limited studies that have investigated the prevention of canitis. One double-blind placebo-controlled trial evaluated the topical use of a molecule called APHG1001, found in extracts from a Chinese herb called Pureria lobata. They concluded that this chemical can prevent the formation of new grey hairs without any significant side effects. So this may be something to look out for in the future. So what are the learning points? Premature greying of hair can be a cosmetic problem for some. There seems to be a genetic predisposition. At present, all available treatments have limited scientific evidence and therefore plucking out grey hairs in the early stages and hair dyes later on may be the best option. The future management may involve targeting the genes and the proteins involved in hair follicle melanocyte biology. This may help us to understand not only the treatment of premature canitis, but also the aging process in general. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.